You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. The secret to well-being is discovering the power that is your birthright, the power to create a happier, healthier life drawn from our own vast internal resources. Join Jules and her guests as they gently guide you to shift your perspective from the familiar negative to the divinely connected, a place that will not only positively impact your world, but possibly shift the planet. It's all right here on Law of Attraction Talk Radio. Well, welcome to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. I'm Jules from beautiful Southern California, and I'm so glad you could join me because we've got a really tremendous guest on, and I'm sure you know about her. Her name is Christy Whitman. She is not only with us today, but she is also our cover girl on Law of Attraction magazine for the March issue. And she wrote a really, really phenomenal uh, article all about quantum energy. And it, it's just something that will help you to understand what's going on with the Law of Attraction. Now, I am really delighted to have Christy on today, and we're going to find out a lot about her personally as to how she even got into the self-development field. And I think this is really important to know so everybody can identify with uh, the things that they need to accomplish in order to feel that they're successful. You know, success is only the result of how we feel inside. You could have oh, I don't know, a couple billion dollars and not feel successful. So success all has to do with the feeling. And if we kind of take our ego and just massage it to stay away so that you can actually feel that, wow, you are successful in your own right, well, it just makes things manifest easier for you. And we're going to get into this subject Really, Christy Whitman is delightful, and she has a huge, huge coaching program that I think you're really going to like. Um, now, before we bring out Christy, I just want to tell you that, oh my goodness, this cruise that we are having, oh, it's unreal. It's beautiful. We have got people coming from everywhere, and it's still not too late. We've got a month. 30 days in which you can come. And if you're looking for a cabin mate, oh, please, please come because I've got cabin mates. Oh, and they so want to go and they're waiting for you. We have got this terrific group of people from Japan coming. They're so wonderful, so nice, so sweet. Ah, and I'm so excited because it's going to be all about new beginnings for all of us, including me, on this cruise. And the thing that comes to mind with everything that has to do with the cruise is people think that they're choosing to go on this cruise. But the truth of the matter is that they have been chosen to be on this cruise. And there's a reason for that. There is tremendous learning going to be taking place on this very auspicious time, which happens to be April 8th through the 13th. It's very powerful. It happens to be Buddha's birthday, as well as a powerful, powerful eclipse. And when you're on the water having this eclipse, everything is possible. It means your dreams can be achieved. The only thing that's stopping you is your current belief system. And when we come together for five days and saturate that, saturate your mind, it's kind of like what Joe Dispenza says. You can't just get your mind set in two or three days. You need like a four or five day period in which all you think about is the betterment of humanity, the betterment of yourself, achieving your desires, getting 
it exactly right. And why is this so important on this cruise? Because you are the one who will be going out and helping others to learn about this very important practice called the law of attraction. To me, it's time that we understand that we are creating not only a new way of living for us individually, but when each one of us changes individually, the entire planet is affected. Yes, world peace is possible, and it's achieved one person at a time. It's very, very important. On this cruise, we're going to put everything together. I'm hoping that you're going to come on this cruise. And I know that it has been on the mind of many people. You need to understand that that is the divine source talking to you, saying you need to take the first step. You have to come on board. It's not expensive. It's very inexpensive compared to the rest of your life. So I want you, if you want to go, I want you to send me an email at jules at loaradionetwork.com. Send it to me personally because that is your first step. That means that you're answering the call of the divine because there's something that you need to learn on this cruise so that it helps you set a path for the future in order to help the world. This is what it's all about. This is the true law of attraction. So come aboard. Give me, uh, send me an email at jules at loaradionetwork.com and tell me that you are coming. With that, we're going to take a fast commercial break and then we're going to be right back with Christy Whitman. Stay tuned. It's here. It's hot. And it's a must read. It's the science behind the Law of Attraction magazine. Every issue brings you great articles and in-depth how-tos from all your favorite Law of Attraction experts, authors, scientists, and medical professionals. Go to lawofattractionmagazine.net. That's lawofattractionmagazine.net. Are you ready for a healthy 2019? Well, if you are, I've got an easy way to heal anything that ails you, and it's all from Mother Nature. If you're suffering from constant stress or issues with menopause, prostate, respiratory problems, IBS, psoriasis, and eczema, or even sleep issues, then Mother Nature's miracles are waiting for you. I know this works because I have resolved my health issues in 2018 using Dr. Todi Camancho herbal tinctures, and I have never felt better. These herbal products really do work. Instead of using toxic medications, try these organic herbal products and you will experience some amazing outcomes that Mother Nature intended since the beginning of time. Go to drtonycamacho.com to buy pre-made tinctures or to set up a consultation in which she can make a tincture specifically for your ailment. Go back to Mother Nature and Dr. Tony Camacho. Visit drtonycamacho.com. That is dr. T-O-N-I-C-A-M-A-C-H-O dot com. Well, welcome, Christy Whitman, to Law of Attraction Talk Radio. This is just a delight to have you on my show. I am so excited to be here with you, Jules. Thank you so much for having me. 
And thank you for being on the cover of the March issue of Law of Attraction Magazine. I got to tell you, it's one of my favorite covers. You are gorgeous on there. And during spring, it's like it's lightening up everything. It's wonderful. Oh, thank you. I know I was teasing my parents. I showed them the cover. I said, your daughter's a cover girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You are our cover girl. I just love it. So thank you for that. Now, Christy, everybody knows who you are, especially if they're interested in the law of attraction, of course. But we want to go a little step further today and find out who the real Christy Whitman is. And we don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but it's just, I think, a common question. How, how in the world did Christy, being a best-selling author, how did she even get attracted to the law of attraction? Good question. I was, I was actually living in Chicago and I was really found myself surrounded by the things that I wanted to attract, not having any of that language, of course, but it was like, you know, I had a goal and I would achieve my goals. So I found myself living in Chicago, I was living in a, a really great apartment with my best friends in seventh grade, oh. living in one of the greatest cities and had a great paying job, and my health and my body, everything was going great for me, but I felt so unfulfilled. And, and it was just that feeling of like, is this all there is? And so I started seeking. I was really feeling like just really that hunger, that thirst. And I even went back to nothing wrong with the Catholic church, but I remember going back to a church and um, sitting in the, you know, in the sermon. And I was just like, no, this isn't doing it for me. <laughs> this is just, this, this is not where I'm going to find this fulfillment. And so I, I really kept just praying and searching and I'm like, help me become, you know, happy. Like, what is it? I've got all these things, but I'm just not happy. And the events and everything that very quickly led me to move to California. Um, there was a, a man that I was sort of dating that was with my company, with the wine company I was with. He lived in California and we started a relationship and he said, come, you know, come to California. So I had asked my company to give me a lateral move to California and they did. And I met one woman, I met a couple of his friends and one happened to be a hairstylist. So I went in and saw Janine. Jules, she had such a light about her. And the way she was talking and her energy and, you know, and I would just kept looking at her and it was just one of those things I kept wanting to know more. And she, and I said, all right, I just have to ask, like, what do you do? Cause you're different than most people. <laughs> and she said, well, I meditate and I work with, um, a meditation teacher and she's really helped me, you know, be more li light and, you know, kind of learn how to do meditation and find myself. And I'm like, I need to get her number. It was, <laughs> I was equated to like the Harry met Sally. Oh yeah. It's like, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> That's how I felt. I'm like, I want what she's got. And so she gave me her phone number and I literally was dialing as I was walking out of the salon and I left Melanie a message. Finally, a couple of weeks went by, we were playing phone tag. I finally sat in front of Melanie and she said something that was not common knowledge that was not all over the internet because we didn't have the internet at that time. This is 21 years ago. Um, barely just started working, right? Yeah, and we right. weren't even on. But she said to me something that rocked me in a way. And I just knew when she said it to me, I don't know how I knew this to be true, but I did know it to be true. That, that divine in me knew it. And all she said to me was, you create your own reality. And I went, that's true how do I know that to be true? And then she said, you are either attracting things from you or attracting things to you or repelling things from you. And that was another stand back and went, wow. I just felt like, like my consciousness was just, you know, expanding in those moments. And she said, you really need to watch your thoughts. She said, I want you to just spend a week. We'll, we'll do another session, spend a week watching your thoughts. And I couldn't believe it, how judgmental and critical. Uh, I mean, it was just, what? I mean, I had no idea. It was the first time ever that I had that moment of becoming a witness to my thoughts. Right. I identified that my thoughts was what reality was, like most people when they start to become awake, right? And so for me, it was like, wow, I mean, judge, judgmental and critical of myself, of my mom, of my sister, of my dad, of the next door neighbor. I mean, 
everyone, God, everyone and everything. And so I started the, learning the process of meditation and learning that there was more to this outer world of our physical senses and started for the first time feeling like I'm connected to something bigger here. And that this God thing is not some, you know, judgmental man on a cloud somewhere watching and, you know, judging me for all that I'm doing here and that there's some kind of heaven and hell that I'm going to get to go to after I die. And cause that was my upbringing. And when I started to learn that each person has a, that, that divinity inside of them, that God self inside of them, and that they're universal laws, that I started applying them. And I remember around the time when I learned there was this house that I would go to um, towards Melanie's house. She was, she was my meditation teacher. And I think, gosh, someday I'd love to live in a house like that. You know, I wonder what that person's life is like and I wonder if they have kids. And I started to imagine and everything. And I remember it was five years after I started to apply the law, the laws. And um, I was found myself living in a house like that. And I was married to a really wonderful, nice guy. Because before that, I always dated like the bad boys. As a matter of fact, the one that I moved to California from with, he was cheating on me. You know, so it was like that kind of pattern and finally changed my pattern with the type of men that I was attracting and um, being able to create my ideal body easily and effortlessly, not having to just do this diet yo-yo thing that I did. Oh, yeah. my life. You know, I, I had, when I was in eighth grade, I was bulimic. I was addicted to diet pills and, you know, did that whole thing. Wow. I've actually, yeah, I've never shared that before. And so to, for me to not be on a diet, I was always like, if there was the next, Ooh, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, this, that, you know, whatever it was, I was on it. And so for me to be free of being able to just find my natural flow of my body and not have to diet, I still eat well and exercise, but to be able to really be happy with my body um, that was huge. So, I mean, just money in the bank and out of debt and, you know, all these things manifested. So I remember taking like a, a step back at five years of really applying this information going, Oh my God, I'm so different. I mean, it's, it's a different life. And so it's just as a seeker, I've just continued to learn. And as you know, with universal laws, there's always more to dig and go deeper and, and release and heal. And, and I've been doing that. And fortunately i have the the ability to then teach it to other people to just really share. This is what I know. This is how I've applied it. And this is what I can tell you about it. And fortunately I've had people that resonated with my message and I'm able to help them as well, which is such a treat. So. Well, actually you have helped many, many, many people because you've been doing it for gosh, since when, what was the beginning of it? My first book, Perfect Pictures, came out 17 years ago. And I, wow. Yeah. And I became a coach, a, a law of attraction coach, life coach, um, over 15 years ago. Wow. Before, before many people knew about life coaching. That's right, because no one did. You know, I think that the best teachers are the people who have experienced what it is that they don't like, because how can they convey that? to the people and actually can identify. That's what makes the teacher the teacher. Agreed. I agree. I'm, so, I'm like, first and foremost, I'm a seeker. You know, it's like I I I just I'm continuing all the time, like learning how to process my energy, like the article that's in Law of Attraction magazine, which I'm so thrilled to be able to contribute. You know, it really is about understanding energy because everything is energy, even our emotions, our thoughts. You know, when we're all of a sudden in a good mood and then our mood dips, you know, what triggered that and what was the belief behind it or the thought behind it? And I'm always doing that. I feel like I do more inner work than I do outer work. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Isn't that? So it is the, the discipline of actually noticing what you're feeling in order to put everything together. It's when we just stay outside in the 3D world and don't go inside to explore. That's really what the problem is. And people don't realize to this day, it's shocking both to us, but they don't know that their thoughts create everything, their health. They have not a clue. 
It's amazing. It is, isn't it amazing? Now that we know that what we know and it makes yeah. so much sense that there are still mo most people, I mean, good 99% of people out there, even though there's been the secret and there's lots of teachers talking about it now and there's lots of people on the internet and the coaching industry has blown up. Most people do not know this information. Right. It's, it's like what I wrote about in my latest book, Quantum Success, is most people, and I did the same thing, that's why I can speak to it, it's, it's an outside in approach. If I go make money, then I'll feel this. If I go get the husband or the guy, then I'll feel this. If I have a kid, maybe then I'll be happy. And what happens is we're like, okay, well, I had the baby. That didn't make me happy. Maybe I'll have another baby. Maybe it's the second baby that's finally going to do it. <laughs> right? Or maybe yeah. if I make this amount of money, you go and make this amount of money. Like, oh, that wasn't it. Maybe I need to make more money, maybe more money. Or maybe if I drive that better car, or maybe if I have that kind of accomplishment or this promotion or status, or we are always projecting our emotions on everything outside of us. And why it doesn't work is because obviously I talk about the seven essential laws. And one of the laws that I find is like even more important to understand and apply the law of attraction is the law of sufficiency and abundance. Because if we're saying where I'm at is not enough, I don't, I feel empty. So therefore I need that pile of money or the guy or the kids or the accomplishment. We're coming and trying to create from a place of lack, which from a vibrational stance, we can't ever do that. So then we get the thing that we want and then we're like, that was deflating. That, that wasn't the thing that we have to create from the inside out, feel the fulfillment, right. feel the success, feel the happiness, the joy, the love, whatever it is. And then we attract those things to us that match that vibration. That is so important for people to realize. And we're still going in the backward stage of it. We're not, we're not progressing, but I just got to say this to you because we're kind of similar, although I don't have a bestseller, but I do have a great radio show. But, <laughs> but, but it's also really important to know, wow, what I'm doing is really something that is good for everyone. It's like you're on your purpose. And to me, that's more important than all the money. It's like, okay, I found my, my thing. This is where I feel good in that I can contribute to the world. Yes. And you know, it's funny. It's a, sto a story I share in Quantum Success is I remember um, I was a pharmaceutical rep and I made a lot of money. And I remember having that moment. I had just become an author and I remember having that moment of like, what does all this mean anyways? I mean, so I go sell more medication, which feels totally out of alignment and integrity because if I get a headache, I put peppermint oil on my head. I don't take an aspirin. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. And if something's going on with my body, I change my foods in order to get my body back in a better alignment instead of taking a medication. That's how I healed my hormones a few years ago. Instead of hearing, oh, well, you know, you're at that age now and hormones are going to kick in and you might as well get, you know, have, have, realize or accept the fact that you're going to gain weight now and this is the way it is. I was like, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not being a victim to circumstances. I'm going to absolutely change it. But back then I really felt like, what's the purpose of all this? And I realized it's like, I wanted to have some kind of meaning and purpose in what I was doing and exactly what I'm talking about here. It's like, I didn't know what it felt like to be on purpose. Cause I never felt that I never experienced it. So I would have to conjure up that feeling. I would have to imagine as if I, whatever I was doing was fully from a place of being on purpose. I knew that I was a light worker. They're just, I'm, I'm a, I'm a light. And, and that's all of this, uh, the truth for all of us. We're all a light. We're all a, a channel for the divine. So I started with what I did know. And it's like, just from that place of, I am a light, I'm a light. How is my light going to shine out into the world? And I would feel what it felt like to truly be on purpose. And things started changing. And that's when, around that time, my first book came through me and I started speaking and people started asking me to coach them. And it was like, because I felt that connection with my purpose, everything else in form then manifested. 
Right. And that goes for everything. If someone never has felt thin and they want to feel thin, but they've always felt heavy or chubby or whatever it is, cultivate that feeling of being thin or being fit or being successful or being abundant or prosperous or opulent or whatever the thing is. We all want something because we think we're going to feel something, but we're projecting it outside that if I get that, then I'll feel. It's like feel, then you get it. Okay. So, so that brings up a question. I mean, because I'm always dieting too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially before a cruise. But um, so how do you feel? How do you feel thin? Give us a clue. How do you feel abundant? How do you feel rich when it's hard to pay the rent? So you have to take all of your energy off of the outer world, off of the five senses, right? Because we're so ingrained. There's so many grooves and, and so much like identification with everything outside. You could look at your thighs and go, okay, well, I'm not thin or whatever it is, like your gut or, you know, whatever, or the bank account. I mean, we look for evidence outside, but it's our best thinking that got us there anyways. Yeah. So it, it's, I like to equate it like a hangover, you know, when you've had a big night of drinking and the next day you have this hangover, right? The conditions that we have created in our life are like a bad hangover. So we need to stop drinking <laughs> or stop thinking the way we've thought in order to create the things that we've created because it must be, it is law. It's not like it works for me and it doesn't work for you. It doesn't, it works for you and it doesn't work for me. It's universal. It works for every single person. And that's why, you know, what I love about working with the universal laws is we have to take responsibility. So to answer your question, whatever it is you're wanting to feel, because it's a holographic universe, because the divine, that energy field inside of you, knows what it feels like to feel all of those things, you can go turn all of your attention inward, this is why meditation is so important, and connect with that divine self. Show me. Show me what it feels like to feel thin. Show me what it feels like to be absolutely abundant or prosperous or successful or whatever it is. And allowing yourself to just start to feel what that feels like inside, the opening and the allowing of what your divine self can give you. That's really energy mastery, is to be able to really connect with that divine flow of all those good things. So if we were to say to ourselves, I just want to like me more. I want to feel good in my skin. But sometimes that's a little too heavy for people. So they have to pick the weight or the money but the bottom line is everybody wants to feel good in their own skin they want to feel appreciated they want to feel loved this is the rules of nature that's how we are well it's the way not only the way we are it's the way our divine self is always feeling about us our divine right. self you know, I, I had a moment the other day where I was like, oh my God, my son is driving me crazy. God, why is he being like this? I'm like, and then I even heard myself, you know, make a judgment about him. And I went, no, this is me, my personality self, because the divine in me, that's always thinking love thoughts and compassion and, you know, in really good things doesn't view him in that way. So that's me, my personality conditioned part of me that's thinking that because he's doing this, he's then this person or acting right. like this. And the, whenever we're judging ourselves, that divine part of us is never judging us. So we are doing, we're having split energy because that, that's the biggest thing is that, you know, there's people that have split energy of what they want and what they don't want. I want this, but, oh, I want this, but I would be selfish to want this. You know, there's that split energy. But the biggest split energy is us, the human being, having so much judgment and worrying about what other people think and what are other people going to say and, you know, and what is this going to look like? And am I here to prove myself or do I need to explain myself? When you can come to a place of understanding that the divine in you loves you no matter what, completely free of any conditions and that you are here as a vehicle to connect with that divine flow it gives you, it gives, I know it gives for me just a sense of peace that it's like, I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to have judgments like I had with my son. I get to catch myself, correct and continue, you know, figure out what do I need to do to connect more with him and come from that loving place. That's my true nature because judgment and criticism and, and, you know, competition and comparison and all that other stuff is not who we really are. That's just okay. the learned personality parts of us. You're absolutely right. 
But when a person starts feeling out of sorts, like you were getting uh, frustrated with your son, it's at that time we've got to recognize that we've got to walk away into another room and sit down and think. <laughs> Why are we doing that? Because I don't know about you, but me, I can just, just totally lose it. Yes. And, and it's I've like, I, <laughs> I and, and it's so, it's like, wow, I know better. But the whole thing is you've got to separate yourself at that moment to, so that you can just do exactly what you said. I can't do that in the moment. I'm not, I'm just not there yet. I'm, I'm working on it, but I'm not there yet. It's, it's a practice. I always like to say, you know, it's like the difference between someone that just ate a box of cookies and then went after the fact went, oh my God, what happened? Right? <laughs> I just ate a box of cookies. <laughs> and that, right? It's like, oh my God, like that was such an unconscious act. And then the next phase is kind of like, you know you're eating the cookies, but you're still doing it anyway. You have no idea why you're doing it, but you're doing it. You're aware that you're doing it. To then, you see the box of cookies and you're like, I'm about to make a choice, right? And you might still make that choice to eat the whole box of cookies. But then it gets to a point where you see the cookies and you're like, no, I don't feel like having cookies. <laughs> it's, it's all yeah. about, you know, it's all that about is. consciousness expansion and awareness and, you know, and, that, and that's growth. I mean, that's what we're here for. There's no exactly. judgment for the person that ate the box of cookies and didn't know what. That's just where they are. But it's, it's good to even later turn around and think, oh my God, that's what I did. Now, now, because I'm trying to be enlightened, is now to go back and figure it out. Why did that happen? It's not just to walk away and wait for the next box of cookies. <laughs> it's to deal with it. And that is so rewarding because that is how growth occurs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stopping ourselves. Yeah. And turning around and think. That's wonderful. So, so you were, became the best-selling author. And people wanted you to coach them. So now your coaching practice, Quantum Success, is huge. I mean, you have done so many people from around the world. I've, I've certified over 5,000 uh, Law of Attraction coaches through the Isn't Quantum Success Coaching Academy. That's amazing. And so how did you decide to do that? I mean... That's a big endeavor. That's, that's a great story, actually. This is where I had a surround sound effect from the universe, literally. And um, during a week, literally a five-day period, felt like a week, um, on a Monday, I had a coaching call with someone. She's actually a really well-known coach now. And she says to me, she says, Christy, I want you to certify me as a, as a law of attraction coach. And at the time, I said, Vanessa, I... I don't do that, you know, but I can tell you where I went and got my certification. She goes, no, I want you. Like she was adamant. You have to be the one. I have to get my certification through you. I want my training through you. You do it differently than everybody else. You know, just, and I was like, okay, I'll think about it, but I, I don't do that. Right. The next night I did a workshop. I was in Montreal. I did a workshop. It was a two night workshop. And the first night I had a woman come up to me and say, I just got clarity. I want to do what you do. Will you certify me to be a law of attraction coach? And I said, I don't do that, but I can send you to where I got certified. Right. And so I thought about, I'm like, that is so odd. Still didn't hit me until the third night. I had a gentleman come up to me at the end of the night and he goes, I have clarity now on what I want to do. I want to be a law of attraction coach like you. And I want you to certify me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm listening now. So on Thursday, I'll never forget this. On Thursday, I sat down and went, okay, divine, you're giving me this surround sound effect. If I'm supposed to certify people, what would I do? And like how all of my books just download through me, my, my arm becomes not my own. I literally picked up a pen, went to paper, and this whole entire course, if I was going to teach people to do what I do, to coach how I coach, what would I do? Modules, year-long program, cost of the program, how I would market it, you know, how, how all of it just threw my arm on a piece of paper. And an hour later, I was like, oh my God, that's a course. Wow. So the next day, 
I was coaching a client. She comes to the call. She goes, I know what I want to do. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I want to be a coach just like you. And she goes, and I want you to teach me. And I said, well, I happen to be putting together a certification program. I will be the first to sign up. And she was. And that was, well, what, 10 years ago. It was in 2007. So no, 2008. What year is it? It was 2008. <laughs> so almost 11 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What a great story. And then just, I mean, I know a lot of your coaches. I've interviewed a lot of your coaches and they're all fabulous. Uh, uh, one in particular is Christy Scott, who has done the evolution cards. I just adore this gal. Mm -hmm. And Joan Robacher, she is so fabulous. All these coaches that you've done and they are so right on target. Really, they are terrific people. So they had and they learned the best from you. And I applaud you for that because I have yet to, make, to meet one of your coaches that you trained. I have yet to meet one that I didn't like and adore. That's An interview. <laughs> they are very A1 people. I love it. And they all have the intent is that they want to serve the people. They want the people to get as much out of life as they're getting. And to me, that sells it right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and the thing is too, is that it's not just me or you or any of them. It's, it's all of us. That power is within each one of us. And I, you know, it's it, like, I like to say, it's like knowing about the seven essential laws is like learning literally about how to play a game. It's like the game of life. And, you know, it's like, how successful would we be if we were never to see the base, a baseball game and we go out on the field and someone hands us a bat and says, okay, hit the ball. And we hit the ball and they're like, run. And so we run to third base, you know, we're going to, we're going to be out. So it makes sense to know the rules of the game and, and how this thing called life actually navigates from a vibrational energetic perspective. And what are, what are, you know, as as you send out, we're all energy towers, sending out a signal signal all day, every day from the thoughts that we think, the words that we say, the actions, the perspective we hold, the feelings that we're either you know, processing or not processing, all that's giving off vibration. And it's yeah. then attracting everything into our lives. When people not only get that as a concept, but really embody that and live from that, it, it's life is just way different. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So you mentioned the seven laws. Would you mind just touching and telling us what the seven laws are? Would love to. So law of attractions, number of one. Law of deliberate creation. Mm -hmm. uh, law of allowing is number three. Law of sufficiency and abundance is number four, which that to me is like the Mac Daddy of all the laws that pulls all of them together. Um, the fifth one is the law of pure potentiality. The sixth law is the law of detachment, and the seventh law is the law of polarity. Ah, wow. So the law of polarity is, that sounds so fascinating. Is it the like does attract like or like doesn't attract like? You're attracting the opposite. Well, what it really is, is that, you know, all things really are many different subjects. So for example, weather on one side, you can have extreme cold on the other side, you can have extreme hot. The topic is weather, but there's, there's different degrees. When you look at someone that's wanting to attract money, for example, or the love of their life, this subject might be money or the love of their life, but what energetic side of the pole are they on? Are they on the lack pole? Or are they on the abundant pole? Because right there in the middle is satisfaction, is being sufficient, is feeling that space of contentment. Most people, when they're not getting what they want, they're on the pole of lack. Right. And they're focused on, I don't have enough money. I want money. I want to attract money. I'm visualizing money. But their energetic frequency is on lack. So if thinking about it as polarity, we are, we are both and. We are both physical and metaphysical. So there is a combining of both and. There's the front of the hand, the back of the hand, right? So in this world, this earth experience, you know, angels among us, non-physical, don't have to worry about polarity. But here on planet earth, we do. Exactly. That is brilliant. I love that. Mm -hmm. And then you've incorporated 
all of this together. Now, did you just write all this out or did you learn that from other people? I learned it along my way, hearing it from, you know, back in the day, Terry Cole Whitaker and oh, yeah. um, oh, I love Terry Cole Whitaker. And she was my first person that, you know, I, I was learning this information about energy and vibration through the meditations I was doing. Um, but she's the first person that said, these are laws. And then of course there's Abraham Hicks and yeah. you know, all the teachers, Wayne Dyer and all Wayne the Dyer. Yeah. And Deepak Chopra and, you know, just all these wonderful, amazing teachers. Um, I put them into, these are seven essential laws because these are the, the, the laws for me. There's other laws, right? I think Bob Proctor even talks about 12 different laws. These seven essential laws are for me, the absolute must, they are essential. And the one, like I said, the fourth law, which is the law of sufficiency and abundance. When you are putting yourself in alignment with abundance, you're evoking the law of deliberate creation. When you're putting yourself in that space of abundance, you're in pure potentiality. So you're deliberately doing it. When you're in pure potentiality and abundance, you're in the space of allowing. Because you're evoking all that, law of attraction kicks in and gives you more abundance. When you're in abundance, you feel the sense of detachment and you're on the pole of abundance. So all of them work together just by applying that one law. And the, the tricky thing is though, Jules, is that most people, most people are programmed no matter what their age, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, even and above. We, we live in this polarity, you know, atmosphere. Most people were raised by parents, caregivers that really were warning us there's not enough. And, you know, you need to do this in order to be enough. And we, we got programmed and imprinted of not enoughness. And I feel like the, the years of I've been doing coaching, I've been coaching people for f over 15 years and all the people that I've had the pleasure of serving is that the biggest core wound is that they don't feel they're enough. And that is the biggest split that most human beings have because that divine inside of us, our, literally our life that's breathing us, that's beating our hearts, thinks that we are absolutely way more than enough. And it looks at us as, you know, we are a vehicle through which it, it, it expresses itself. And because we're even here, because we have this life experience, that's more than enough. Right. It really is. Yeah. Good point. I love that. Oh, gosh, this is great. This is great. Okay, so you have your new book, Quantum Success. It's now out. And tell people how they can get that book. Well, it's on Amazon. It's also it's everywhere, but... Everywhere. Yeah, it's Simon Schuster is the publisher, so it's you know pretty much distributed everywhere. Um, you can go to quantumsuccessbook.com, obviously christywhitman.com, but um, it's it's really a book taking the seven essential laws. This is my fifth book. This one is specific towards the seven essential laws towards career and money. So oh, I, yeah. So I use a lot of my examples of how I created a multi-million dollar business and, you know, was able to, um, back in the day when I was applying the law of attraction, I was living in a small town in Redding, California, and I kept getting these amazing high paying jobs with these incredible bosses that would give me absolute support and freedom. And I kept winning all these different awards and max out on the bonuses and, you know, just having this quantum success in my career by applying the seven essential laws. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's so true. If you're practicing law of attraction, you can't be a victim. There's no such thing. If you feel like you're a victim, you're not practicing it. That's a telltale sign Absolutely. that if you don't get over that, honey, <laughs> it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. Stay where you are. But if you want to move on from being a victim, change your mind. You change your life. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's, you, that you just said everything right there. I mean, you cannot be a victim. You cannot sit there and blame something outside of you or the government or your parents or your, you know, whoever. It's like when you know you create your own reality, sometimes it's a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. Like, oh, I created that. You know, I mean, I've had situations since even practicing law of attraction where my son at two months of age, we almost lost him. He was rushed to the hospital and had to have open heart surgery. Oh my gosh. 
and to, you know, but to apply this information and tell my husband, we got the diagnosis that, I mean, it's an incredible miracle story. I mean, most babies that are um, diagnosed with a transposition of the great arteries are found, you know, in utero and they're operated on within the first day or two of life. And those that aren't, um, most of them pass, you know, um, in the crib within a week. They never, in all the history of knowing about this, have ever operated on a baby that was two months of age because he had holes in his um, heart and the valve didn't oh close. So this little boy wanted to be here. And i um, so grateful that he is. But um, during that time, I told my husband, I'm like, uh, even though all the odds are against what they say, we are not going to let anybody around him in the ICU that hasn't worried or fear energy. Um, we are just going to focus on what we want, what our vision is. And we would sit there and talk about how fun it's going to be to go to Disneyland and go to the Grand Canyon and take these different cruises and trips and, and how to see, you know, Maxim and Alex run wrestling around together with their dad and seeing them grow up. And I said, we're not holding any other vision. And we would sit there and do rampages of appreciation for the hospital and the staff and, you know, the people that were supporting us during that time. But I had to take a step back and say, how did I create this? You know, how, did, how did, if, if, if I am such a deliberate creator and I know what I know and I've created such a beautiful, amazing things, how could I have created this? And coming with that question, I learned so much about myself and not as a blame to myself, not to judge myself or to condemn myself, but from a really just eye-opening place of not to say, oh, God's against me or blaming anything even outside of myself. There was a moment that was unreal of clarity. Um, my best friend Dawn, her nephew, who was around two months of age, was having heart surgery um, when we, got, we, we were conceiving Maxim. And I remember feeling absolutely so terrified that if I ever had, for her brother, that if I ever had a child that had to go through that, because I just had Alex, he was about five months of age, if I ever had a child that had a heart surgery, I don't know what I do. I would just die. And I was putting all that, not what I want, not what I want, not what I want out there. And when we created that and there was other co-creative mechanisms on my husband's side too, but to go, wow, I didn't die. I handled it really well. It, it was not fun going through, but wow. I mean, I can look at all the situations in my life and that's the one where I, deliberately without any type of wavering focus my intention on abundance and law of attraction and deliberately choosing how I wanted to feel and pro doing all of that work. It was time to roll up my sleeves and practice what I knew and what I was, you know, teaching others to do. And it's still one of my greatest manifestations to look at this kid who's now eight years old, total smart Alec, funniest kid, super jock, just sweetest, sweetest little boy, you know, and to look at him every day and, and know what's important in my life, but um, how important it is to not stay stuck in fear to process the emotions out because I got fearful and it's stuck there. And uh, understandably, but you know, the fact that you moved forward to create something better, even Wayne Dyer, leukemia. Mm -hmm. He didn't stay stuck in it. He started traveling. He went to see John of God. He went to, he did all of these things. He started writing constantly at four o'clock in the morning. So he didn't stay stuck. That's the most important thing. If you're going to be a victim, okay, move on. You identify with it, understand it, and create something different. That's the big lesson, and that is such a blessing that you told us all of that. It's wonderful. Now we're getting it. We're getting the picture here. <laughs> I can hear everybody saying that. It's, yeah, it's whatever we've manifested, whether it's financial, relationship. You know, Abraham Hicks says this, and I've been saying this for years. It's not like a high school diploma, like you get an, or a college diploma that's forever done. I mean, whatever has been manifest we can still manifest and recreate it. Even if it's great, we can even make it better. It's all, we are absolutely creators and we have the divine creator 
flowing through us and nothing's ever done. We can always look, I always like to say, these are my favorite things to tell people to do is that when you're looking at contrast, which is something you don't want, when you find yourself playing a victim, when you find yourself stuck in a problem and you're out of control, you feel like you don't have choices, ask yourself, what do I want? Uh what do I want? Because that immediately shifts your focus off of the complaining and what you don't want, the contrast. What do I want? And then why do I want it? Because then you start moving energy and you start thinking and opening up to not the problems, but the solutions and you know the possibilities and the abundant flow. And that's when energy can start moving. That's when law of attraction starts kicking in. And then the most important is, what do I want? Why do I want it? And how do I want to feel? When I think I want this guy, or I think I want this success in my business, or I think I want this pile of money, what do I think I want? What am I assigning outside of myself? Well, I want to feel free. Great. You have the ability right now to feel the freedom. Exactly. Feel it now. That doesn't have to happen. And then it's like, oh, I feel so good now. I feel free. I feel successful. I feel joy. You know, whatever it is, I feel it now. And now I'm detached from that thing. It'd still be nice to have it. Still would have the guy in my bed or have, you know, the guy to dance to or with or go to a movie with or have the money in the bank or, you know, go on that trip or whatever it is. Of course, these are the niceties of life. But I get to feel the feeling now without anything having to change. Yeah, that's so neat. Yeah, it's like you're taking a trip right now without having to go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, Chrissy, this has been so much fun. And I can't thank you enough. You have just given all of the listeners something to think about. And it's something, isn't it strange that we have to be reminded of it on a consistent basis? Because if we don't, we, we kind of just revert back to our old ways, you know, if we have to be reminded of it. And that's why things that you do and things that I do, it really is helping people to stay on track. Absolutely. It matters. It really does because we're so conditioned, even if we're aware and awake and, and we know about this stuff, there's so much conditioning that happens that we have to be reminded of it. Oh, exactly. And I, I, I've been doing this for a while, but nothing will it just takes a second for me to feel like a victim again. A second. It's like, and I'm going, whoa, wait a minute. What am I doing here? But you know, it's, it's just no matter how old you get, it's always going to click in, but it's up to you to unclick it. So that's the big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Christy, this is wonderful. Now, how do they get a hold of you so that they can go and learn about your coaching program? Well, I'll tell you, I have a gift for everybody. You can go to watchyourwords.com because I feel like the, I get asked this all the time from, from regular radio stations when I do media that aren't having this level of a conversation. Um, how does someone even start, right? The first thing that we have to do is we have to watch our language. We have to watch our words because each word has such creative power. Right. And a string of words is a thought, you know, and thoughts create our reality. So when you're saying things like, I can't afford this, or, you know, I'm, I, I don't want this, right? We need to be able to shift it into an empowering phrase that leads us to what we want instead of what we don't want. So there's a, a 30 day series of 30 different phrases or words. Um, each day you get a different word and it just helps educate you on it. And just those little shifts makes a huge difference. Huge. So watchyourwords.com watchyourwords.com. I love that. And of course you can go to christywhitman.com and you can purchase her book there and um, read her article in Law of Attraction magazine. <laughs> it is fabulous and her pictures are gorgeous. So it, this was a fun issue for me. I really, really love doing it. And I hope you come back onto my show. Love to have you again. I would be honored. Thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity. I'm really grateful. This is my, this is my tribe. It's, it, there's no convincing. They already, you know, believe in law of attraction and understand it. So it's, it's like, I feel like I'm, I'm home. So thank you so much, Jills, for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. 
We'll be back next week with another great show from Law of Attraction Talk Radio. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send an email to jules at loaradionetwork.com and have a great week.